Before we start, I wanted to put up a few of the social media platforms that one um, could use or maybe you guys are familiar with so that you could think about while I'm going through this presentation how you might be able to implement social media um, and certain kinds of social media into your classroom curriculum. So I'm just going to put Snapchat up right now. Um, but can I, can I bother um, maybe David? Do you use a specific social media? Like, which, do you, can you give me a social media to put up here? Instagram, OK. Um, Haley, you got anything? Uh, OK. Uh, can I explain this right? Instagram. Instagram. Sorry, I know people don't like the finger on the board. Um, anything else? You guys can shout it out. Facebook, the face. Anything else? Slack. Slack. Anything else? Yes, sir. I mean, but it, is it an interface? Yeah, Could be used. Be How do you spell that? Like the Italian? -E Whoa. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. P Y A? P I A. Oh. Okay. P I A Z Z. Okay, and so there could be definitely more of these, and I need to put out right now that um, if you guys have questions about the pedagogical aspects of these or the kind of deeper psychological aspects of these, Mindy is the queen of this stuff. Um, so she actually publishes stuff about social media and how it's used in the classroom and how it can lend to education. Um, so I think I'm using this thing right. Um, but so the reason that I decided to do this was partially because I was in a classroom that I was totally ill-equipped to be a TA for and I needed to add value in some way. Um, partially because I needed a technology project for CCUT. Um, but partially because I've been reading all these things about the modern classroom and how we have these new challenges to deal with. One of which is technology-rich resources. So we're, um, students are not only kind of expecting to see technology in the classroom, they've at this point really been reared with technology. And um, there's even some debate as whether students can learn without technology. So um, it might al almost be an essential thing for your classroom. In addition to that, there is a lot of um, added stress and test anxiety, or anxiety in general, but in but really test anxiety is the big one. Um, part of this is stemming from larger enrollment and less um, confidence that even getting an undergraduate degree will get you the job you want. Um, so there's a lot of worry that they're spending a lot of money on tuition, they're not gonna actually get the job they want, that the undergraduate, undergraduate degree may not necessarily be as useful as it once was. So, and then we have this issue of test anxiety, and I think this is a pointer, maybe not. But um, you have this problem where students actually get so anxious about the exam and performance that they do poorly, and that basically supports their you know, initial idea that they're going to be doing poorly on the exam. And so this cycle kind of continues over and over again. And so then also we have this issue with decreased uh, attention. As you can see, this girl here is practically falling asleep. It's probably like maybe some of you guys right now after lunch. And the um, Abercrombie model on his phone over there. Um, so poor Abercrombie model can't stay focused because he has his phone. Um, but the phone is really what brings up the big point is that these students are constantly looking at their phones. Um, most of my students probably check their phones like 15, 20 times a day. You guys probably do as well. And so since they have this semi-addiction to their phone, why not utilize that with social media? Um, why not actually harness that semi-addiction for educational purposes? And so can social media be implemented to address these factors in a modern classroom? And so what I did um, was I did, the, the polite way of saying this is the social media case study, but my more Machiavellian title is how I use Snapchat to manipulate children. Um, because they're already obsessed with Snapchat. Um, in fact, all of my students in the class that I was TAing um, had Snapchat except for one girl who had deleted it from her phone because it was too addictive. So that tells you that we're, I was using the right platform, I think. Um, but to give you a little bit of an idea about the case study, um, I TA'd 113L, which is Vertebrate Ecology and Evolution, also known as the class that I should never TA because I'm not a vertebrate person. Um, but this class basically hangs out in these two levels of Bloom ta Bloom's ta taxonomy. Uh, you basically have a lot of time spent 
looking at specimens, trying to memorize their scientific name, understanding some general ecology and evolution about those animals, but it's a lot of memorization um, in the lab component of this course. So all but one student already had Snapchat. This was a completely optional thing, so uh, it did, she didn't have to add this back in. Um, and so that's one thing you want to think about is if it's a smartphone-based thing, does, is there a component that allows them to use the computer? Because we do want to be inclusive and assuming that everyone has a smartphone might not be the best thing for an inclusive classroom. Um, but it was totally voluntary. There were no points allotted. Simply the students knew that at the end of the course, I'd probably be looking at their scores after everything had been submitted and comparing to see if there was any difference between scores and whether or not they'd use Snapchat. Um, so basically, I spent the quarter learning Snapchat, and because I'd never had it before, um, and then trying to take pictures outside and eventually inside because dead birds move less. And um, I spent, you know, probably two or two or three hours a day running around trying to take pictures of um, these animals, which was probably a lot of time invested for the first round. Um, but the students basically received these regular snaps throughout the day of pictures of animals that they were supposed to memorize. Um, the temporary nature of the snap mimicked a time quiz, and that's one of the reasons I really opted to choose Snapchat over something like Instagram. As I'm sure many of you guys know, Snapchat, at least in the previous years of it, has um, an option to have a, t or it's now an option, but it's, uh, it's only 20 seconds of exposure time. So the student will see this snowy plover on its phone on her phone, his phone, and basically only have a little bit of time to look at that to make the decision. And that, in a sense, gamifies the time situation in a pop quiz. So I was trying to see if I could reduce a little of that test anxiety. Um, so the students were able to respond with guesses, again, totally optional. Um, and then I, in turn, was able to respond with a yes or no. I didn't want to spend too much time responding yes or no. And again, if I, if I just simply say no, that means they need to study more. Yes. So, um, and so I took this information and assessed whether or not, um, I assessed whether or not they were able to increase their score with this. Um, and this is basically just to show you guys kind of how this rolls out. One of the things that was very important um, is that I asked the students to block me from their story. Because if, if you have, have any students that were, are working on Snapchat, you know what they do on the weekends. And um, the My Story function, you can block the person from the My Story function, but if you don't, you end up seeing pictures of them doing things you don't want to see in their personal life. So, um, so though this is basically just a little bit of a tutorial for you guys if you want to look at this later. Uh, but so the other nice thing about Snapchat is that the students were able to very easily, these are my students, I swear. Um, they're very able, they're able to really easily add Snapchat because you have a function that allows you to basically take a photo of the QR, is it QR code? That's what it's called. Um, and so they can basically just walk up to me and add my account on Snapchat instead of having to do a lot of logistics. Um, so the one thing that I had a problem with, with with respect to Snapchat, like the one reason I was a little worried about using it, is the distractibility of it all. And this is probably one of the major issues with any of these is whether or not we want to like do the cost that way, the benefits of, there's an actual page here that's called the Discover page on Snapchat. And you can just turn to it and look at all sorts of random fodder from Snapchat. So is that too easy to get to while they're looking at a picture of a bird? And so was it valuable? Well, um, from a scientific perspective, there was, no, there was no significant change in the grades of the students that did use Snapchat and did not. However, you'll notice that the range of the distribution and the, sh and the distribution itself has been shifted, um, where the students, uh, this far one is students using Snapchat, and this closer one is students not using Snapchat. So there was a bit of a shift here, um, but from a significant standpoint, there was not a significant grade change. Um, but I find more interesting, and perhaps an, an indication of its the hidden value here, is that for the most part, everyone who took the anonymous survey for Snapchat said they loved Snapchat. They um, would have liked it used more, but I was trying to learn it, so that was helpful, or not, not useful, trying to learn it at the same time. They also said that they felt more engaged because as the Snapchat users 
that little subgroup, which was not just my class, but anyone within the lab class, they said that they were actually talking about snaps of birds on campus. So I think that's great. Um, it was almost forming like a larger study group. Uh, they felt like they stayed on task with studying more, perhaps because they were reminded that they needed to know these birds. Um, and many of them said they didn't like the time limit. So that might be an, indica an indication that Instagram might have been better, but then I lose that gamification aspect for the pop quiz idea. So this is the anonymous survey report. Um, year two of this, I actually tried to get the people who were running 113 to do this without me um, and have the, all the TAs do this. And they had some logistical setbacks for the most part. Um, because they were all using the same Snapchat account to make sure that everybody got the same snaps. Um, there's a little bit of issue with everybody trying to log in on different days and not having the Snapchat available right away and having to log in. Um, so there are definitely some things that one has to think about in terms of administration and you know, course equity, class equity, make sure everybody's getting the exact same material, especially if you're going to be doing this for a grade. Um, but we had a similar grade effect where there basically was a slight shift up and a, and a, smaller, um, and a smaller range, grades that are more bunched up toward the, the good grade area, um, but no actual significance. So um, is there unseen potential here? You know, final grades are the only quantitative measurement I have here. There's a lot of evidence that repeated testing like this actually increases retention. So long-term retention, you might actually see that the students that use Snapchat know birds longer. Um, and then there's a lot of report of just in general increased enjoyment of the class. So that might be in itself worth it. So my question is for you, do you have fears or reservations, comments or questions about how to actually use this in a classroom? Um, can the benefits outweigh these potential costs? And is there any way that, like for example, Lisa's class, that we could, enjoy, we could implement something like Snapchat or Instagram uh, effectively in a class that's reaching higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy? So I'll give you guys a few seconds to think about that and then I'm going to start helping you guys to answer to me. Yeah. yeah. So a clarifying question. Sure. So do we need to identify the animal with like scientific name yeah. and information? So the response that I would get from Snapchat was typically the common name, but they could also give me the scientific name. They were tested on the scientific name. Um, the information that was more based on the ecology of the evolution of that particular animal, I didn't necessarily test on. I usually just kept it to the birds or slash the lizards slash the antelope. Yeah, so, and I, and I did check um, most, if not all of these, yes, all of these actually have a um, functionality on a laptop or a desktop, but yeah, I did worry about that because I really do want, smartphones are expensive, and I think we assume that everybody has a smartphone, but I, I often see flip phones, even with grad students, so, yeah. Yeah, um, and I think, I think most students, especially if they don't have a smartphone, tip, typically take their laptop with them. So hopefully that could be mitigated. But, yeah. yeah. I guess one of the my concerns is bridging that line between, like, I'm your professional gay and I don't, don't want to see what you're doing again. Yeah. I don't enjoy any of my private life because yeah. that's just weird. And I think like using other forms of social media, like Facebook, that can be a little bit weird unless you get in the group. Or I mean Slack's fine, but I feel like that could get pretty challenging with like Instagram or mm -hmm. Facebook. Well, and I think one of the nice parts of something like Instagram is that they have a very distinct ability to follow or not follow. And so you don't have to, if you're following, you don't have to follow them. Or if they're following you, you don't have to follow them. With, with Snapchat, there, was a lot, there, are, there were a lot more hoops to jump through to make sure that I was not seeing what they were doing on the weekends. And I have to be honest with you, sometimes they just didn't seem to care. And so I would just never open those snaps. 
So um, yeah, it is a little, it's a little tricky. Um, one thing I definitely recommend is if you're going to do this, um, create a non-personal account, obviously. So this is my BioQuiz account, and I have a BioQuiz Facebook now, and BioQuiz Instagram. Okay, thank you.